for five innings en route to his ninth win. Steven Strasburg appeared to be his old self in a second straight solid start. Tonight, the scene is Atlanta where we reflect on recent success at Turner Field and look ahead to a rematch from last week in D.C. The Nats aim to make it nine straight against the Braves in game one. Turner Field in Atlanta last time here was one of the most interesting series the Nats have ever played. Hey big guy rooting for the Nats and hoping for a three game sweep starting tonight. It'll be tough to do Shelby Miller and Jordan Zimmerman. Bob and FP good to see you after our day off. Hope you had a good Monday and the last couple of trips here have been interesting. There was a clincher last year and then a comeback this year a comeback for the ages. Yeah and this place used to be a place where the Nats struggled a lot Turner Field Atlanta. I don't remember too many any happy trips to the airport in 2011 but in 2012 they turned it around and then in 2014 last year on September 16th the clincher here in Atlanta everybody going crazy there is no wrong pipe champagne for everyone in the clubhouse so the Nats would go on to win the East by just 17 games and then how about April 28th you thought we weren't going to show you highlights of April 28th well you're crazy the Jose Lobaton home run that brought it within three Dan Uggla's triple off the bench and then the big home run to make it 13 to 12 the greatest comeback in Nats history kind of turned their season around so all of a sudden Turner Field a place that used to be a shop of horrors is a shop where the Nats succeed more times than not so the Nats since the 28th of April have won 35 games the runs are up the on base percentage is up the slugging is good the defense has been better and it's interesting now listening to the local media getting ready for this series they're saying all the stuff we were saying like two years ago how do we beat these guys we're playing well enough against everybody else but we can't beat Washington so the roles have reversed they have reversed the Nats have won eight in a row but Shelby Miller Bob is the best pitcher I've seen against the Nats this season his stuff plays 97 miles an hour tons of running his two seam fastball a tough two to one line Loss for him, a great two to one win for Jordan Zimmerman last time. The Nats got their work cut out for him here tonight. And if Jordan Zimmerman can keep the lack of run support going for the Braves, Shelby Miller might lose eight in a row because of that. Jordan's got to be good tonight. He's been good against the Braves in his career, looking for win number six. The series in Atlanta should be a good one.
Young Nats fans getting ready for this one. So at least with the youngsters, we've got them outnumbered right now, and that's a good thing. Bryce and Denard Spann. They wish they were hitting back-to-back -back in the lineup, but they'll just have to be separated by Espinosa and Escobar. Now, great pitching matchup last week, F.E. Here we go again. These rotations have pretty much stayed the same. We're repeating some good matchups from a week ago. Yeah, Jordan Zimmerman, fantastic his last start. Eight shutout innings. And Shelby Miller, like I said in the open, some of the best stuff I've seen. Probably the best pitcher the Nats have faced this year. He's allowed two earned runs or less in 13 of his 15 starts. Hitters facing pitchers again, Dan. What's the scoop on that? Bob, you don't often see a team face the same starter twice in a week, but that's what we've got here today. So how does that affect a hitter's preparation going into the game number two against that starter? Well, Denard Spann told me that because Shelby Miller pitched so well against the Nationals his last time, he doesn't expect Miller to change a lot up. Spann was going to go back and look at tape of his at-bats against Miller, trying to remind himself how Miller went against him. Clint Robinson, on the other hand, said he doesn't feel a need to watch tape from Wednesday. He remembers his at-bats pretty well and that Miller started him off with a first-pitch curveball in his first A-B. Robinson said the key when facing a guy twice in a short period is how you feel like you saw the ball against him. Robinson went 0 for 3 against Miller the other day, but he felt he saw the ball well, so he'll go into tonight's game with confidence. Overall, Matt Williams feels the hitter has the advantage. The more he sees a starter, you develop a sense of timing, a sense of familiarity, because you know what's coming, Bob. Wow, Matt Williams looks like he wants to go Max Scherzer for this one tonight. Bryce Harper has gone, well, Bryce Harper against the Braves. For the year, hitting 387 against him, 12 for 31, three long balls, 10 RBIs as a result, scoring 11 times. Yeah, they booed him when he was intro as part of the lineup. Bryce and the Nats coming up. And a walk off home run. for the achiever in you and by visit annapolis.org find the chesapeake experience at visit annapolis.org yeah that's another state capital annapolis and uh, downtown atlanta features the state house here shelby miller takes the mound for his 16th start of the year he's in the top three in era he's in the top three in opponents batting average he doesn't strike out a ton of guys but he's tough to hit 83 degrees Clear skies, a few clouds in the distance. We had a big time storm blow through here this afternoon, but it's very comfortable right now. Nats, fourth in the league in hitting, second in runs to Colorado. You know, Escobar, former Brave this month, fifth in the league hitting at 349. He's hit 345 his last 13 games in the top eight in the league with 85 hits. And he's seeing a lot of good pitches with a kid named Harper batting behind him. Shelby Miller 2 and 0 in five career starts against the Nats. Yeah, last start was in DC against the Nats. He took the tough luck 2 to 1 loss, pitched 7 innings, gave up just one run on 3 hits. And to what Dan was talking about, when you face a guy within the same week, 
if he's a guy like Shelby Miller who throws a fastball as much as he does, there's no real mystery. I think the Braves have more of a mystery with Jordan Zimmerman, whether it's going to be the slider or the curveball as the secondary pitch. But Shelby Miller pretty much all fastball, so cut the fastball, an occasional curveball. As we saw last time, that two-seam fastball with tremendous run from one side of the plate to the other, and right-handers hitting just 164. Components 200 against Shelby Miller this season. Denard Spann is hitting 366 on the road. First pitch right on time, 7 10. Ball one, low and inside. Span checks in at 305. He's been on base 19 games in a row. And that reflects that 360 on base percentage. Shelby Miller gets one by him, one ball, one strike. Gabe Morales, junior member of this umpiring crew, has the plate. CB Buckner, 20 years in the big leagues this year. Crew chief at first, Dan Isonia at second, Lance Bear at third base. One one pitch. Slap to left and span. Starts the series off in good fashion. He's also hitting right handers just under 350 this year. Well, there goes a the no hitter. And it's a big hit, and I'm going to tell you why. That's only the fourth first inning hit that Shelby Miller's allowed this year. He's allowed one run all season in the first inning, and opponents are hitting 065 against Shelby Miller in the first frame. So that's a big there goes the no hitter with the Nard Span. This is a guy that flirted with one this year, was one out away from a no hitter on May 17th against the Marlins. So nice swing by Span. Danny Espinosa steps in. By the way, Denard Span. Was one for 13 against Miller career before that base hit. So he's on base 20 games in a row now, hitting safely. 11 of his last 13. Danny hitting 229 left handed, 251 overall, and he's been on base three times in eight career plate appearances against this talented 24 year old right hander. Couple of hits and a walk. And Espinosa goes to the gap in left center. That might chase Denard Span all the way around. Bob Henley will wave him in easily. And just like that, one bag, two bags, the Nats lead. That's only the second run that Shelby Miller has given up in the first inning all season long. I mean, that's no small stat. This guy's given up three first inning hits all season long. And he's given up back to back hits here, so make it five first inning hits. And now two runs. Danny Espinosa going shopping at the gap. A double scoring Denard Span all the way from first. And the fact that that ball kind of checked up against the wall enabled Bob Henley to send Denard Span. Yeah, these are big, deep gaps if you can split them out there. 380 right behind Kelly Johnson, 390 behind Nick Marquecas in right. And here's Escobar who knows this ballpark very well. He was a brave for four years, his first big league team. He's up there hacking, and the Nats are attacking early in the count here. I'm talking to Bob Henley before the game, and I said, you know, I hesitate to call you Senley anymore because you're getting so good at coaching third that you're actually know when to stop guys now. I said, last year you just sent everybody because you were new at it. Now you're actually getting really good at it, which he got last year, probably May or June. I say he's no fun anymore. I don't send him. <laughs> Escobar, 324. Fourth highest batting average in the league. Sporting a 376 on base percentage. Bryce Harper waiting. And the Nats have a chance for more here in the first. Escobar pulls it. Danny Espinosa. Good read goes to third. Simmons thought about it for a moment, but Danny saw the lack of speed on that ball and took off. Absolutely right, Bob. As a base runner, you can go when the ball's hit to your right. If it's hit slowly and you have a good secondary lead, you see Espinosa shuffling into his lead. Ball not hit well. He advances to third, and Bruce Harper just stepped in the box. <laughs> He's back. They love him here. I wouldn't like him if he'd hit three homers and driven in 10 against my team either. It's 
So Bryce steps in. Third in the league in hitting, second on base percentage, third in homers, fourth in RBIs. He'd be back up there with all those guys, except for the time he's missed over the last week or so. And of course, then you walk up and foul one off your foot to start your night. Twenty-one of twenty-six when scoring first, and that's exactly what the Braves broadcasters were talking about coming into this game. Scoring in the first infield in here, but they were lamenting the fact that the Nats have scored so many early runs against their team. Just walked them in. They were back on the first pitch. They saw the chopper off his foot, and Freddy Gonzalez decided to bring his infield in. Maybe has something to do with the guy that's pitching against him, who threw eight shutout innings last time, Jordan Zimmerman. Bryce Harper, two for 11 career with a walk against Shelby Miller. So now the Nats trying to take advantage of the up heads up base running by Danny Espinosa. See if Bryce Harper can plate his 59th run. Target away. Shelby Miller gets it with 96 upstairs to us. So he went back door cutter 88 to pitch before and then fastball up and away 96. You see the little late run to it and Bryce Harper just a hair tardy. That ball almost 10 miles an hour faster than the previous pitch. Set the defense for the Braves behind is Shelby Miller. Johnson, Maven, Marcakis, the outfield, Simmons, Uribe, left side, Peterson, Tardoslovich, right side, and A.J. Perzinski behind the plate. Now the infield will back up for Wilson Ramos. And he sees a big curveball, 79 straight down, ball one. Ramos, 292, his last 12 games. Looking for career hit number one against Shelby Miller, 0 for 5. Ramos checks in with 34 runs batted in. There's a left handed hitting first baseman and Robinson behind him tonight. And a fastball hit up the middle. Two out RBI hit. Wilson Ramos. So he's collected his first career hit against Miller. Now the Nats have really done something unheard of against this guy. Well, he did a nice job of picking up Bryce Harper, and that's what good teams do. Bryce didn't get Danny Espinosa in with one out, something he's done a fantastic job of all year. But Wilson Ramos with two outs picks up his ball club, picks up his teammate. And a big 2 nothing lead early against the Braves. Coming out swinging against Shelby Miller. Yeah, three hits out of five batters. Robinson on the attack as well. He had a couple of ground balls and a fly ball to center against Miller in Washington last week. The more at bats he gets, the better Clint Robinson gets. 310 over his last 18 games now. Just so quiet at the plate. He doesn't have a lot of movement. Isn't that what you first noticed about him in spring training? That yeah. Impressed us. Low maintenance swing. That, that bodes well for a bench guy because you don't have a lot going on. But Clint Robinson, not a bench guy anymore. He's an everyday guy. 
And the bench has just done a fantastic job. You're wondering how Matt Williams, Mike Rizzo's bench was going to fare this year. And Michael Taylor getting a chance, doing well. Clint Robinson doing well. Dan Ugla has been contributing. Tyler Moore with more playing time at first base. I mean, they've done more than help the Nats tread water. The Nats have won with these guys in there. Yeah. 2-2. Two -two. That's good Shelby Miller up to at least 20 pitches in this first inning. Big gap in right center. So he moves the ball away like he did against Harper, but he misses. And that's a big thing with Wilson Ramos at first base. Look at the overhead camera, how far outside that is. And when we showed you the other one, it looked like it was close. <laughs> you see the difference on the angles with the center field cameras. Yeah, I love that look. It's elevated more than the others. Ramos can run now on 3 2. And Clint Robinson will hit one straight back and stay alive. How close we are here. I'm going to move my coffee. Well, there's no overhang here. Yeah. And we're in roughly the same spot we were in Philadelphia. Maybe a little bit to the right of where we were in Philly, but down low. Get a great view of everything here. 3 2 again. Robinson chops it foul. Checking with Gabe Morales to see if that was in the strike zone. It looked like he got the word that it was. Mercedes Benz on the at bat. Off speed. Robinson down the line. See you later. It's a four run top of the first for the Nationals. And for Robinson, his third big league homer, all on the road. Did he even get that? No. He just muscled it out of here. Yeah, I don't think he got that. It didn't have the sound at all. It looked like a, a 3 2 curveball from Shelby Miller. After painting a fastball, that pitch was not what you thought Shelby Miller was going to throw right there. And that at bat for Clint Robinson. Was the 3 2 pitch before that and he fouled off the borderline fastball to buy him another pitch. Miller hangs a curveball and all of a sudden it's four to nothing Nationals. The pitch before was key though. That was paint on the black at 94. He had an emergency hack, fouled it off, bought himself another pitch. Tater, four nothing. Great at bat. Three homers, 10 RBIs now, his last 19 games. He and Desmond up there swinging. So the pitch before was the key, but watch the curveball for Miller right here kind of come in. And down right onto his barrel. And it had a weird sound. It didn't sound like a home run. But the ball carries into the second row, and wow. And a very unhappy fan caught it. Let me repeat the stat. He's allowed two earned runs or less in 13 of his 15 starts. Shelby Miller is allowed four runs here in the first. One and two to Ian Desmond. Swinging a foul tip, inning over. But the Nats nearly hit for the cycle. Single, double, single, homer. Robinson caps it off. It's a four spot in Atlanta.
Because this is a pitcher's pitch. Watch where it is. On the black, who knows if it's strike three. Emergency hack by Robinson. So oh, funky swing, right? Buys himself another pitch. Then he gets the hanging curve on the inside for his third home run of the year, 13th RBI. Makes it four to nothing. So a lot of times we watch the highlights and it's the hanger that you see. But how did you get to that? Great piece of hitting by Robinson to extend that at bat. A changeup compared to most home run speeds, 89 on that one. Here come the Braves, sixth in the league in hitting and in runs. And Kelly Johnson, he's done some damage against the Nats. A guy resurrecting his career back where it began. And he's five for 14 career against Jordan Zimmerman. Nick Markakis, a hit machine lately. He's the guy the Nats have had the most trouble with. So here's Jordan, 14th career start against the Braves. Five and two coming in. Yeah, last start was on the 24th against these very Braves. Two to one win, eight shutout innings, gave up just six hits. Struck out three, walked nobody, 102 pitches. Fastball averaged 94 miles an hour for Jordan's last start. Opponents hitting 283. Jordan Zimmerman, first fastball right in there. Jace Peterson, three for 10 career against him. And a bouncer, two Desmonds left. Ian was playing up the middle, and he knew he had just enough time to throw out the speedy Peterson. So the defense for the Nats, Taylor, Span, Harper, your outfield, Desmond Escobar, left side of the infield, Espinosa, Robinson, right side of the infield, and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. I guess the bufferine thing went well in Potomac last night. I got a lot of pictures of it on Twitter that mm. really it's captured the essence. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> Captured something. I, I haven't. Know. I haven't seen it, so you're going to have to show me one of those. I've been a little scared up to this point. Yeah, you should be. Maben <laughs> and Jordan pounds the strike zone with a fastball to him. He's on a four-game hitting streak, five for his last 18. High chopper, Espinosa have to use that gun. Desmond Espinosa up the middle, looking good early in this one. Early game notes for us. The Nats throw the ball around the horn. At the Braves in three career starts, Jordan has been almost unbeatable. Braves, even with Freddie Freeman in the lineup, those times hitting under 200. They've been hot at home, six of eight, but they're coming off a one and five road trip to Washington and Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, that is. And the Nats scored 30 on them, second most ever by an opponent in this ballpark that opened in 1997. And will be closing prior to the 2017 season. John Sherholtz told me this afternoon their new ballpark's coming along nicely up in the northern suburbs. Fast ball, and that's in the zone. 0 2 to Nick Marcakis, who has 86 hits. I heard that new ballpark's just gonna be a city all by itself with like hotels and. They're building hotels along with the ballpark right now up there. Restaurants. A couple of sports bars, a couple of sports bars. Places to live. There's John. Uh, as far as I know, still the only ma general manager to win a world championship in both leagues. 85 Royals, 95 Braves. Oh, two to Nick Marcakis, who is seven for 21 career against Jordan Zimmer. But boy, has he come out throwing strikes here. Four run lead, free and easy. Still have to throw your game and make your pitch. And looks good so far. 0 2 breaking ball got him, inning over. Marquecas knew he'd been had and he can only walk away. A couple of grounders in a strikeout. Jordan Zimmerman gets a nice early lead and drops the hammer on a really good hitter.
usual on the road. Come out to Nats Park for a three-game Independence Day weekend. July 3rd through the 5th, the Nats will look to avenge last year's postseason loss against Madison Bumgarner, Buster Posey, and the rest of the world champion San Francisco Giants. Go to nationals.com to get your tickets today. Shelby Miller, first inning. Remember when I noted that they had just gotten him to 20 pitches? Well, he had to throw eight more thanks to Clint Robinson to get out of that inning. 28 pitches, 18 strikes. Michael A. Taylor leads off 93 up high. Match start the night, two and a half up on the Mets, who are throwing Jonathan Neese at home against the Cubs at City Field tonight. Taylor thought he could get it up and in. Two balls, one strike. Nats are six up on these Braves, who a week ago were kind of knocking on the door as far as getting right back in it at the top of the division. Nationals took care of that. Then they lost two out of three at Pittsburgh. And who knows what happens the rest of this game, but when you've beat a team eight times in a row and you come out against their best pitcher and score four in the first, you've just sent a huge message that we're not letting up, we're not easing up, and you can't play with us. Like I said, long way to go in this ball game, but statement made in the first. Marlins hosting the Giants before San Fran comes to D.C. Phillies delayed by weather tonight hosting Milwaukee. Taylor on the breaking ball couldn't get it. Shelby Miller's last three strikes, or at, rather last three outs have been strikeouts. So against any opponent, the Nats have two of the longest win streaks in baseball over Atlanta and Houston. And there you look at some of the others, and some of those are very unlikely interleague. Yeah, rivalries. That Mets Orioles rivalry is it? That's huge. Blue Jays Phillies. Who doesn't love that rivalry? Yeah. Well, kind of everybody taking advantage of the Phils right now. And those interesting numbers brought to you by Jeep. Here's Jordan Zimmerman, who has four hits and three RBIs this year. All three right here on one swing. Bases loaded. I think double. Could have been a single. I can't remember. I know it cleared the bases. Last time we were here in May or April. Yeah, the uh, the comeback was two months and two days ago. I remember the Nats had just come off of a nightmare of a weekend in Miami. They'd been swept. Lost game one of this. The ensuing series with the Braves eight to four. Then the comeback. And then Jordan goes out the next night and does indeed hit a three run single in the fourth inning. Part of a four run frame that got the Nats on top and they went on to win 13 to four. Bouncing ball right side two hops Jace Peterson. Two outs first time through the order. The Nats go four for nine to score four runs. St you can tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Nats couch cam and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. We're doing that again. You might see yourself right in the middle of our show. Yes. And I'll make up a name for you and where you're from. Awesome. Span a base hit to left. Espinosa a double to left center. And that got the stage set. Last inning for the Nats explosion. Shelby Miller misses upstairs 1 1 with 88. So he has fanned three of the five he's retired. Coming into the ball game, just 70 strikeouts in 97 innings. His stuff moves so well, he's got a lot of ways to get guys out. Top of the zone, Denard thought that was up. Definitely something you don't want to swing at if you're Denard Span, good low ball hitter. Roger McDowell, the Braves pitching coach. They are over four earned runs a game, the Braves. And Span can't reach that. Shelby Miller 
Well, the Nets got him early, and that's what you have to do against the really good ones for nothing. Join the Nationals on July 4th as they host Independence Day, the third installment of this season's Patriotic Series as presented by SAIC. Be a part of the salute to our country as the Nats take on the Giants. 11.05 start. Be sure to enjoy brunch at the ballpark. Enjoy a variety of brunch, food, and cocktail items at the Red Porch and other locations throughout the park. Gates open 8.30 a.m. <laughs> Visit Nationals.com wow. to purchase your tickets. 8.30 a.m. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be your only chance this year to be at the ballpark before the broadcasters are there. Yeah, maybe even the players. Oh, man. I'm thinking about our crew, though. Our guys and gals at Masson will probably be in the yard at about 6 o'clock that morning, maybe earlier. So, 8.30 gates. How about that? A.J. Pierzynski didn't like the call from Gabe Morales. Bottom of the second is underway. We're going to need a tanker truck full of coffee to come to the ballpark Saturday morning for our mass and crew. Players too, they get in late Thursday night, 6:05 start on Friday, and then right back at it at 11 o'clock. Brzezinski rams one to right. Bryce Harper can only watch it. He'll play the carom. It'll get away from him, and AJ Brzezinski has a double. To lead off the second. Remember, that's the wall Bryce Harper ran into last year here. So he pulls up. Smart move by Bryce Harper. Przinski hit it well. Ball really carrying to right field here tonight. I didn't think Przinski hit that ball well. But a double either way, whether Bryce Harper fields it off the wall. He might have had a chance at second base with his arm, but a nice swing by Przinski. A leadoff double is 12th of the season. That'll bring in Juan Uribe. One for four career against Zimmerman. And hitting 298 for the Braves since coming over 28 oh. games ago. Good breaking ball for a strike. 36 year old infielder. Who's always been a good hitter. Traded to the Braves May 27th. After hitting 247 for the Dodgers. Breaking ball front door style right in there. See if they stay inside try to keep him from going the other way. That was a breaking ball that he reached out and pulled and. Bo Porter got a piece of it. Lowest DRA in June career. How about that company he's in. Weather warms up. He cools off the bats. I think. You might say those other guys are in good company. <laughs> good call. Fastball up.
swing and a miss. Big breaking ball down and away. Unreachable for the first out and the runner no chance to advance. Well, the strike three to Nick Marcakis was a curveball. This one a slider to Juan Uribe. So both off-speed pitches, early returns, filthy so far from Jordan Zimmerman. The curveball to Marcakis, the slider to Uribe, check and check. Mm. Nissan tracking a wonderful slide piece. And here's Kelly Johnson. Started his career with the Braves in 05. That's a 78 curveball hammer dropped in there. He's not worried about showing that pitch to left-handed batters. Your baseball slang tonight is on point, by the way. Hammer, slide piece, keep it going. Like what I'm seeing. Shall I call that a heater inside? Yeah. One, one. A little fuzz on it. Yeah, to have hair on it, fastball's got to be a strike. It's, and it's got to be upper 90s. With, with fuzz, I like that. Ridiculous movement. You know what you don't say anymore? What's that? I don't know if you're aware of this. Hold on. That's a breaking ball popped up. Ian Desmond had it. Is it a can of corn? You you don't say crispy fastball anymore. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think it's been about two to three years since you've said. I, I bought a baseball thesaurus in the off season. Did you? Yes. I'm trying to learn some different terms. Was it written by Vin Scully? Probably should be. And there's a lot of words in there you can't say on TV. Oh, one of those. Yeah. Oh, so it's a clubhouse guy. Yeah, okay. It's a dugout clubhouse got it, baseball. Got it. Thesaurus. Here's Joey Jardosilovich. Four for 17 in 10 games since his recall. Jordan Zimmerman, 93 upstairs, and he's showing the Braves everything he has early in this one. I, mean, I think we should use a lot of baseball slang tonight. Maybe explain it to the fans as we go. Sure. A little dugout talk. Explain what, you know, fuzz being mid 90s, 94, 95. There it is. That's the baseball source in the dugout. It says Braves on it, but that's code. Looks curiously like a scouting report on the Braves to me, but I'll go, I'll go with you on that. And the O2 two pitch, he jams it. The bottom line here is everything Jordan Zimmerman's throwing is right around the edges of the plate. That would be paint, Bob. When you say a guy's painting, he's right painting on the edges right. of the plate. Get out your notes pads, folks. It's going to be a long evening. <laughs> 0 2 target in. And the fastball is up there. Showed it to him on 0 2. Late swing to stay alive by the 26 year old switch hitting infielder outfielder Joey Jodoslovic. That would be a tardy pass. We have to call the grounds crew and get a shovel up here soon. Mm -hmm. I'm educating. I'm bringing fans into the dugout tonight. One two pitch. Tried to grab that corner. 93 just missing away. Breaking ball hit to left. Taylor to his right catches the fair ball near the line and a great battle back by Jordan Zimmerman after the leadoff double. Espinosa Escobar Harper 2 3 4 straight ahead.
Most important connections, four to nothing Nationals, top of the third inning. Jordan Zimmerman doing his thing. Clint Robinson with the big blow. Shelby Miller, that's this guy we've been talking about. The one earned run in 15 previous innings. So Denard Spann got the party started. There goes the no-hitter. Danny Espinosa with a double in the gap. That would score Denard Spann. Bryce Harper with the strikeout. And then Wilson Ramos, two out hit up the middle. And then Clint Robinson, his third home run of the year, making it four to nothing. Watch this. Takes his helmet off. Wait, I'm supposed to put it on for helmet taker offer guy. Put it back on. Where's helmet taker offer guy? And he took it back off himself. Well, Desmond was stepping into the batter's box. Yeah. Isn't Lobatone usually the guy who takes over there? Yeah, and that's why he put it back on for Ian Desmond. Then he realized Desmond was in the box. So he, what you didn't see is he actually took it off one more time. So even though it was an amazing at bat, very confused going back to the dugout. It's okay. Do whatever you want after an A-B like that. Absolutely. And Clint Robinson has hit three home runs in the big leagues. And that's the first major league team really ever given him a chance to play. Breaking ball and Espinosa looks at a dandy by Shelby Miller, who went strikeout, grounder strikeout in his second inning. Changing up his game plan, throwing more off speed than he did last time after the four run first. Espinosa looks at that one low, 96. This one will be out of play down the left field side. Braves are 14th in the league in attendance at 24,939. Marlins about 3,000 fewer per game. Braves will draw better, especially on the weekends now that school's out. A lot of folks come from Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Carolinas to come see the Braves. Espinosa gets jammed. This ball down the left field side, and it is on the ground. Danny around the bag, and he's two for two. Going the other way, paying off for the Nats second baseman tonight. I was staying inside the baseball, gets enough of it, hands in the right slot, flips it into left. I'll tell you what, Danny Espinosa. His stance is becoming one of the more unique stances in all of baseball. How many guys do you know that really almost start with two feet on the back line of the batter's box? He's square up to the pitcher. And it's worked to the tune of about 260 this year. Close yeah. to it. Well, you watch him set up and you wonder how can he ever get ready in time? And he does. Well, he just It's a rhythm thing where he just kind of walks into the baseball from the back line. Escobar advanced Espinosa from second to third with a ground ball to short first time up and he was trying to make it six nothing in his old ballpark. His best season with the Braves was zone nine hit 299 here with 14 homers 76 RBIs the following year he got hurt. His left abductor in May ended up being traded to Toronto after that season. Chose bunt it'll check up. It'll stay fair and Escobar without a play is at first base and it's two on for Bryce Harper. Arebe decided not to try and throw that ball. Well it's got to be a hit Arebe trying to transfer the ball kind of popped out of his glove but you know Escobar was beating this one no matter what. Good idea by you know Escobar not often do you see a three hole hitter in the big leagues bunt for a hit but he saw Juan Arebe back and as soon as this ball hits softly. You know he has a chance and Arebe can't handle it. Ball pops out of his hand. Good thinking, good execution. Back to back hits here in the third. Bryce Harper struck out with Espinosa at second base in the first. Shelby Miller worked him over with high heat away. So the Nationals have six hits already against the Atlanta Ace. Harper in the left. Ball's carrying. Going back to tag is Espinosa. And he will scamper to third. And Danny Espinosa's in there. And then the trail runner, Escobar, goes to second. Well done by the Nats. A productive out for Bryce Harper. You're right. It's carrying tonight. 
a good read by Espinoza, and, and the reason he did this is because he saw Kelly Johnson be flat-footed. And Kelly Johnson caught it up on the wall, and good advance by Danny Espinoza. Smart play, good base running. And I don't know if Bryce Harper's hurt or not, but he didn't really even move out of the batter's box. I don't know if he knew, thought that ball was foul, didn't pick it up or what, but with that sore leg, he didn't test it at all right there. Here's Ramos, who's already hurt the Braves one tonight. Once, that is. And that's in the dirt. So you're wondering how that leg is feeling for Bryce Harper. He's been hustling all season long on everything, but on this one, saw where Kelly Johnson was playing and knew he was going to catch it. Back to the dugout. Good base running by Espinosa on the play, like I said. Well, the Nats had one run when Ramos got that two out single, and then Robinson added two more. Looking for something he can elevate, he did, but it's out of play off to the right. So Wilson Ramos has checked in with his 35th RBI, and two more sitting out there. Pitch count one out third inning 54. Braves have retooled their bullpen since the last time the Nats were here. And Ramos to short contact play coming home Espinosa they've got him hung up. Now they throw it down the line. There were two players in line, Aribe and Simmons, and Pierzynski's throw went right by both of them. Five, nothing. Freddy Gonzalez can't believe what he just saw, and I really can't believe what I just saw either. Good job by Espinosa to get in the pickle. We got ourselves a pickle. Krasinski spun around and looked at a rebate like it was a rebate's fault. That's a big time big league show up. I mean, he threw it across the runner. How is that one a rebate's fault? And you can see Krasinski whipping off his mask, looking back at a rebate. And that's what teams who've lost five out of their last six do. Never want to show up a teammate, ever. So Ramos ends up at second. I mean, he threw that across Danny Espinosa. There's no way Juan Uribe yeah. could have caught that. And maybe we can break it down a little bit more. Juan Uribe in the right place. Przinsky broke into fair territory. So as the defender, the guy that's going to receive the ball, you go into fair territory too. That's called creating a lane. The lane was created perfectly. Przinsky just yanked the throw and then flipped his mask off and looked at Uribe like, how come you didn't catch that? So fielder's choice E2. One one to Clint Robinson who's already driven in two tonight. And he's looking to go the other way. So here's the lane created. Look at where Uribe is. He's in fair territory. So is Przinsky. They're in line. And there the throw goes almost hit Espinoza. And then watch Przinsky whip off his mask. And maybe he didn't show Uribe up. Maybe he's just frustrated by the throw he made. I don't know. Yeah. Could have been wrong 100 percent on that looking at it again. Well the longer you stay in the rundown something might happen and that didn't take very long. One and two to Robinson now with one out. He'll take the off speed low ball two. Bob Henley checks in with Escobar. Ramos at second.
And Robinson can't get 95 upstairs for the second out. Shelby Miller fifth strikeout. Well Wilson Ramos picked up Bryce Harper in the first with a two out knock and see if he and Desmond can pick up. Clint Robinson here in the third. Desmond had three hits in 12 at bats in the Philadelphia series including the two run homer game two on Sunday. I got Gabe around square didn't it. Yeah, rattled his cage took it off and checked out his gear. The Nats took the crowd out of this one early in this inning. Hasn't done anything to help the Braves. And he just takes Desmond right up the ladder and strikes him out for the second time. So the Nats get a gift. Unearned run. Five. Nothing. Defensive numbers lately, which show how proficient guys are in the outfield, how many balls they're able to get to, how many runs they cut down. Well, ESPN Stats and Information keeps track of defensive runs saved. In the month of June, Michael Taylor ranks second among all major leaguers with seven defensive runs saved behind just Kevin Kiermeyer of the Rays. Matt Williams attributes some of that to getting familiar, getting playing time next to Denard Span. But a lot of it, he says, is just experience. Taylor has gotten a ton of games under his belt now at this point. He's playing on an everyday basis, and he's comfortable out there. The Nats are very happy with how Taylor's contributed all around, contributed big hits, cutting down on his strikeouts, and he's making big plays defensively as well. Five assists from the outfield this year for Michael A. Taylor. Thanks, Dan. And that's Dan Coco with our Coons.com sideline report when you're talking cars you're talking coons I mean diving plays out there he's caught balls up against the wall I have three come to mind the one behind his head the one in Tampa where he crashed into the wall and left so he saved a lot of runs and that's a guy that's played primarily center field was a shortstop before that learning left field at the highest level has done a nice job and got a pretty good one right next to him to look at every night too. Oh two target in Andrelton Simmons takes it. By the way, first 27 pitches in two innings, Jordan Zimmerman missed with four of them. Come on. Four? Interesting how righties are hitting him better than left handers. That one to the other side of the field for Danny Espinosa. So, four straight since the Pruszynski double 
Let off the second. Shelby Miller with one hit this year will be the hitter. Turner Field, Atlanta will be right back here tomorrow night. It'll be Doug Fister rematching with the rookie Matt Whistler. Braves don't know yet who they're throwing, or if they do, they're not telling. Against Max Scherzer Thursday night. Shelby Miller takes a healthy hack, fouls it to the club level. To the right of us here, no balls, two strikes. Goes right after him, strikes him out. First time through the order with three strikeouts. The Braves go one for nine against Jordan Zimmerman. It's time for Toyota Case for Kids. The Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a donation of 37 bucks to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by an ass pitcher this season. Three strikeouts so far for Jordan. And he drops that thing right in on Jace Peterson. Started the Braves night with a ground ball to Ian Desmond. Jammed him and Peterson able to get that thing the other way. Braves have their second base hit. American Standard, who's hot? Who is not hot? Jordan Zerman, Cameron Maven. Jordan about three hundred runs or less and twelve. It was thirteen career starts against the Braves. Cameron Maven, four thirty six average at home. Pretty good on the road too. But that is the largest difference in the majors, but both are pretty good in my book. Yeah. Celebrate the season with American Standard All Star Sales Event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Maven the other way. Here comes Harper. And Bryce has it. First base umpire, CB Buckner making the call. And Bryce Harper makes an outstanding play to end the third inning. Freddie Gonzalez gave the hold on sign, so hold on. Take a look back in the dugout. And that's it. We're good. Good thing because the ground crew was already dragging the infield. <laughs> Great play. He got it cleanly off the turf. Place to be. The Nats take on the Giants. 605 start of that one. So you can celebrate Independence Day a day early. Post game freedom fireworks. That's presented by Associated Builders and Contractors. United States Navy Ceremonial Guard drill team will kick off that display. So, I mean, what's better than the 4th of July weekend in D.C.? Defending world champs in town. I cannot wait to get home. It is going to be a fun homestand, folks. Be there. Top of the fourth, Michael A. Taylor. Whoa! Breaking ball. Just a little above the bill of his helmet. 
slipping away from Shelby Miller, who has struck out six, including Taylor, once. He was jumping all over a 2 0 pitch, but that 94 upstairs hard to get over the top of. Michael A came in hitting 309 his last 18 games. Batting eighth mostly, leadoff on nights, Denard Spann has had to sit out just a couple of times. Spin who will hit after Jordan Zimmerman in this fourth inning. Taylor just got a piece of it on the foul tip. A good shot at Denard Span. Two hitters away, just locked in on Shelby Miller on the top step of the dugout. Focused. Probably visualizing his at bat. Thinking about what he's going to see, what zone he's going to see it in. Big league prep right there. Mercedes Benz will show you the hole at bat, and that pitch number six was outside. Taylor with a good at bat, he'll take the base on balls. Shelby Miller, first walk tonight. Season series, Nats have won eight in a row after that first loss. They've out homered the Braves. By almost a seven to one margin, outscoring them, hitting with runners in scoring position, pitching well. The Braves, by the way, have come in to this series having scored 21 runs total in their last 10 games. My how times have changed. If I had a nickel for every time around town I was answering, why can't the Nats beat the Braves a couple of years ago? I'd be rich. And my standard answer was brilliant. I don't know. I mean, everywhere I go, why can't they, why can't we beat the break? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things. And now the Braves broadcasters are having to answer that same question. And it was always weird. Remember weird things would happen. The Nats would play totally different against the Braves than any other ball club. They'd be yeah. rolling along. You know seven out of their last nine Braves come into town and just weird things would start happening left and right. Great bunt by Jordan Zimmerman. Third of the year 40th of his career. And Michael A. Taylor's in scoring position with one out fourth inning. Two shots to get a sixth run on the board for Denard Spann and Danny Espinosa, who are a combined three for four. Everybody up off their seats, giving Jordan Zimmerman some knucks, some love for a good sacrifice bunt. And right back to same seats. Denard 21 RBIs. Taylor can get a pretty big lead here because Peterson's playing to pull, but on the other side of the infield, Angelton Simmons has to respect Denard's ability to go the other way. So he's trying to let Taylor think he's hanging around. He kind of is hanging around. Denard Span has the whole left side. Yeah, he'll uh, he'll retreat a little bit here, like he has. There he goes. And Span will hit a little chopper down the line. Shelby Miller barehanded. Play and that's all he could try. I don't know if Shelby Miller's asking the home plate umpire if Span was running on the grass, but everything looked okay from here. Well, Denard Span smelled and hit all the way on the swinging bun attempt. Runners at the corners, one out. Watch Denard just tap this one, actually hit behind the plate, trickles into fair territory, and he was on the grass at the end. Just a little bit, right? You, you see the grass kicking up. He's a good step on the grass. Yeah. 
And I think you absolutely nailed it, Bob. That's what Shelby Miller was asking Gabe Morales, home plate umpire. And that play never gets called unless the ball hits the runner. That was a wide miss. I tell you, they have kept Shelby Miller off the stretch throughout this game, except for the second inning. I don't know if that would. Denard Span was visualizing the dugout, but he'll definitely take it. <laughs> I'm going to hit one 38 feet down the right field. Hit speed, 14 right. miles an hour, base hit, line drive in the books. Thanks for coming. He's got a good lead here, too. Espinosa, two for two. There goes Denard. Ball taken inside. He steals number nine without a throw. Denard Span, nine for nine this year. Great jump. Even on a pitch right down the middle, Przinsky didn't have a chance. Infield really in on the right side, a little further back on the left. And now Simmons comes creeping in. And Espinoza had left field on his mind in Atlanta tonight. Fouling a couple one hits. Off. Feeling good to two feet in the back of the box. Number 150 for Denard Spam. It's a great number. That is. Congratulations. Watch Danny Espinosa's feet on the bottom here. It starts like that, but then it starts creeping back to where he's almost got two feet on the back line. That's a great shot, guys. Look at that. And just a timing thing, right? Watch him just roll right into the pitch. He'll take it on the corner, 89. You'd think that's where everybody would throw it, throw Espinosa on the outer half of the plate with that stance, but he's covered that pitch, meaning he can reach it and do some damage with it on top. Five nothing Nats and looking to add on big time here in the fourth inning. Two strike battle now for Danny Espinosa. Inside, right off his belt buckle, two and two. Spans two for three, Espinosa two for two. Escobar has a hit. Top three all over the bases in this one. Close enough. So the Nats about to get Shelby Miller to 80 pitches in the fourth inning. Two two. Spot of that ball coming back too late for it. Two down. Seven strikeouts. Shelby Miller. Well, the Nats have had their chances with runners on third less than two outs tonight. And have had chances to blow this one wide open. But a pitch that really didn't do a whole lot sometimes surprises a hitter. Espinosa thought that was going to break. It didn't. Escobar. Bunt base hit last time. And of course, Uribe playing way back with two outs here. To drive in a couple if he can. Is it a stretch to say you know Escobar may be the most underrated player in the National League? Not at all. I mean, every time you turn on all the different shows on various channels, you never hear a word about you know Escobar in the Nats. Yeah, who's only fourth in the league in hitting. He got jammed on that one. Out to short for Simmons. And the Nats are gone in the fourth. Couple of base runners, they've stranded four so far, but lead by five.
about scoring them by five. Three, four, five for the Braves. It's our Honda do up as we go bottom four here at Turner Field in their careers against Jordan Zimmerman. Marquette is the most damage. 0 for 1 tonight. Krasinski a double his first time up. Juan Uribe struck out. Jordan is 5 and 2 career against the Braves in 13 starts with a 284 earned run average. Three very solid innings, 38 pitches, 32 strikes. There used to be a time in the 90s when Braves fans would need Tommy John surgery from that tomahawk. They did it so much. I haven't seen it a whole lot lately. It's only as good as the offense, right? Yeah, I'll tell you what, you come down here in the 90s when they were winning division titles left and right. As soon as you heard that as a player stand out there in that field, you just think to yourself, uh oh, here they come. Yeah. And it used to get loud in here, too. Two and one. So a variety of pitches getting out hitters in a variety of ways. Three grounders, three flies, three strikeouts. Up in the zone. Three and two. Marcakis thought he had walked. Looked up. I don't think pitch track adjusts high and low for hitters' heights. I thought that was high. Three two pitch. Pretty much the same area. This one popped up left side. Escobar. Easier play for him than the catcher. And he has it. For the Achiever in you, PNC Bank with our minor league report. And we go to John Sims getting the job done at Potomac. By the way, he's a, another guy out of Rice following Anthony Rendon. 11th rounder just two years ago. Big kid, right hander. 6'3, 205. John Sims. 4 and 1 with a good ERA. Related to Phil? I don't know. Billy? Texas guys. Not Billy. Not Billy? Well, Billy's a Texas guy. Famous Sims for a thousand, Alex. Brzezinski double over the head of Bryce Harper first time. With the shift on, looking to bunt his way aboard. Jordan Zimmerman had it covered. Did you see him bounce off the mound? That would have been fair. Would have been close at first. He's a good athlete. Really good. I mean, you talk to your defenders. Okay, if he bumps, I got it. Watch Jordan Zimmerman almost anticipating it before it happened. He saw Prasinski square and had the lean going toward the third baseline. Fastball rights high on 0-2. I would have trouble as a hitter if I had that bunt. It was a free hit and I missed it the rest of the at-bat thinking about it. I could have had a free hit. That's a good breaking ball. Charging in Espinosa from right field on the run. Clint Robinson knew that was going to be tough for him to reach. Danny Espinosa is everywhere on defense. He is. He's the rover. He's Bugs Bunny. Now starting at first, Danny Espinosa. Starting at second, Danny Espinosa. Shortstop. Zimmerman. Jordan Zimmerman now. Three more in a row since the base hit last inning by Peterson. And a ball uh, well out of play right side off the bat of Juan Uribe. So Zimmerman has retired eight of the last nine. Got a rebound a nasty slider with two strikes last time down away. Challenge fastball and Juan took a hack at it straight back. 0-2. Do you 
you set it up with a fastball into the slider way or do you just go right to the well. Same pitch he struck him out with last time in no two count. Yeah, right to the well. Threw him another one. Span broke back, comes in, and can't recover. Tough read. And just kind of reaches out, puts it in play, and you saw Denard Span take a good three steps back, and that was the difference on that one. He was fooled by the swing, obviously. Don't see that too often from Denard. With two outs, that'll bring in Kelly Johnson. First pitch strike. He played for three different major league teams last year. Yankees 77 games at 219. Red Sox picked him up. He had 25 at bats there. And then in 19 games, the Orioles had him. And the Braves brought him back as a minor league free agent in January, made the club in the spring. Drives that one to left field. Taylor is their room. Yes. Michael A was playing that way, and that's it for Atlanta, bottom of the fourth inning. Bryce Harper has made an outstanding defensive play. He's got the bat waiting, top five. Jordan Zimmerman putting zeros on the board after being handed an early lead here in Atlanta. So we're going top five here. Harper, Ramos, Robinson, Shelby Miller. He's due to bat third in the bottom of the fifth, and he's thrown 82 pitches. Four foul tip. Then he gets a breaking ball and rims it out to right center. Rice thinking two until Maven stops him, and he is headed into second base. Spikes first with a two back. 
Bruce. That's Bryce Harper's 42nd extra base hit. I saw A.J. Pruszynski put down two, and I'm thinking, you just threw a fastball right by him. Why in the world are you going to throw a curveball right here and speed him up? And speed him up meaning that he was late on the fastball, and he's had trouble getting to Shelby Miller's fastball. Not that he can't get to a mid-90s fastball. Some guys just don't pick up guys for whatever reason. So they decide to go with the curveball. Bryce rips one in the gap and a hustle double for Bryce Harper. Great swing, good hustle, 17th double of the year. Looked pretty good running, didn't he? He did. Love that hard slide in the second. As a rule, infielders don't want much of anything to do with those. Wilson Ramos won for two with an RBI hit. Peterson really playing him up the middle now. After Wilson hit one that way early in the game, and that little flare would be about eight feet foul right side. And Ashes keep on getting hits. Shelby Miller had that one, one, two, three inning in the second. But the next two innings they had at least two base runners trying to do that here in the fifth. He struck out a bunch of guys but the Nets haven't allowed him to just really get into his groove getting quick outs like he usually does. Nothing to wait around for you got a guy that throws a lot of fastballs get on the first heater. Gear it up. Two to Ramos here with nobody out. Fastball up and away. Oh, no, it's not. It's a strike. Przinsky jumped up. As if thinking about throwing to second, and they still got the call. Strikeout number eight. Nissan on the pitch track. First couple of pitches into Wilson. That one on the outer half. No argument from Ramos. Next up, Clint Robinson, who has the big blow of this game. The two run homer top of the first that made it four nothing. And that scored three runs with two outs. I don't see the same type of run on the Miller fastball that he had a week ago at Nats Park. On the 24th. He was throwing that fastball that two seamer and it was going from one side of the plate to the other. It has a little run to it tonight but not the same as it had. You remember Wilson Ramos had in that bat where he started the fastball off the plate away ran it all the way across the plate right on Wilson Ramos's hands and broke his bat. And Wilson saw the pitch he was looking for in the outer half when he went to swing it was off the plate on the inner half. Not the case here. Two order with Clint Robinson here who's. Might be geared up for something, but that's way up and away. 3 0. Right hander, Ryan Kelly. They've added him and Jake Brigham to their bullpen since the Nats saw them last week. By the way, the Nats this year have scored 19 runs against relief pitchers who are no longer in the Atlanta Braves pen. 3 0 pitch. Four pitch walk. Robinson's aboard again. Shelby Miller's second walk. Ian Desmond coming in. Dan has more. Bob Desmond has struck out twice so far today, but coming into this series, the Nats have been happy with Desmond's offensive offensive progression lately, and a lot of that they feel comes from better pitch selection. Matt Williams was really impressed with his seventh inning at bat in the second game of yesterday's doubleheader or Sunday's doubleheader. He worked Ken Giles for a walk, a really tough matchup. Didn't chase the fastball up or the breaking stuff down. The key the Nats feel is pitch selection. If he swings at strikes, he has success. Shelby Miller's taken him up the ladder a couple of times in this game. And that's up and in. Miss Desmond. And back to the screen. The runners move up to second and third. Well, that's the case with any hitter. I mean, you swing at strikes, you're going to have success. You swing at balls, you're not. It's what you do in your approach in order to do that and be able to see the baseball to make those decisions. You look at this one. Good take by Ian Desmond. That one just missed on the inner half. But how do you do that? You, you try to keep your head still. Whatever you could do in your approach to keep your head as frozen as possible allows you to see the baseball and allows you to make better decisions. 
And a lot of times you feel like Ian Desmond just designates, I'm swinging at this pitch no matter where it's at, before seeing it. Yeah, and Shelby Miller's just working him up and in, up and in. Fastball after fastball here. They announce wild pitch on that one. Desmond 23 RBIs infield in. Up and in again. Harper at third, Robinson second base. Coming into that twilight time here. 834 local. I don't think up by five runs with Bryce Harper's leg the way it is that Matt Williams is putting on the contact play right here. Infield in. Simmons a little bit deeper because he has a strong enough arm to give himself a few more steps in the average shortstop. And it's really something. Shelby Miller 93% fastballs tonight. 2 2 with one out. Desmond takes it in there. And he has struck out for the third time. See if Michael A. Taylor can save the inning. From the scoring standpoint, as he bats in front of Jordan Zimmerman with first base open. And they're not going to give him a chance. He will be walked. But, as FP said earlier, we know what happened the last time Jordan Zimmerman batted in this ballpark with the bases loaded. Three run single. How often do you say that? Three run single. <laughs> Never. But Shelby Miller, I mean, the one good thing he can hang his hat on tonight is he's done a nice job with a runner on third less than two outs. The Nats have had four opportunities so far in this game, and he's done a nice job of that extra gear we talk about. So Jordan Zimmerman coming up, Roger McDowell to the mound. Braves team ERA coming in 4.03, tenth in the league. Shelby Miller's 1.94. It's just been a crazy run for him because he hasn't won a game in his last seven starts with a respectable 270 ERA, but he's getting less than a run and a half per game in support. So there it is, and the run support, not a pretty picture for the Atlanta offense. Trying to help out their picture, their pitchers. As mentioned, coming into this game, Braves 21 runs total last 10 games. Zimmerman 0 for 1 with a sacrifice. He has 15 career RBIs. About that. She cleared the bases twice. Maybe a sack fly with a two run single in there somewhere. That's to the oh. outer edge. No balls, two strikes. Bryce Harper doubled the lead off the inning. After Ramos struck out, Robinson walked. They moved up on a wild pitch. Desmond struck out. And then Michael A. Taylor walked intentionally. Zimmerman swings through it. Shelby Miller strikes out the side. Ten strikeouts in five innings. It's taken him over a hundred pitches to do it.
produced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Five to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Steven Strasburg with a nice job on Sunday in game one. Nats take on the Giants this Sunday, July 5th. ESPN will now broadcast this matchup, whatever, on Sunday Night Baseball. 8.08 start. The first 25,000 fans receive the Steven Strasburg bobblehead. That's presented by Geico. Visit Nationals.com to purchase your tickets today. There's Steven. Clean cut, Steven Strasburg pitching beautifully. His last two times out. Clean cut Jordan Zimmerman pitching really well tonight. 54 pitches, 43 strikes. Knowing what to do with a big lead handed to him in the first inning. Tervaslovich, Simmons, and then most likely a pinch hitter for Shelby Miller. Down comes the hammer. A little quick on those last two. This is where he usually steps back off the mound, slows it down a hair. Exactly what he's doing. Breaking ball got him back in the strike zone. Michael A. Taylor in left. First out, fifth inning. All right, it's that time. Time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Nats Couch Cam. And you just might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. This one sounds dangerous to me. Mm. Number eight hitter Andrelton Simmons. On the ground out to Espinosa first time. Former Nat Yuri Perez is on deck. And a ball sharply hit into left field. Simmons with that base hit. Four for 24 against Jordan Zimmerman. By the way, for those of you who might have been at the ballpark last week when the Nats were playing the Braves and didn't hear our conversation, he was eerie. When he left the Nats last year, but the guys in Atlanta told us he's Yuri Perez again, and he's their guy, so we're going with them. So here's Yuri Perez. And against his former teammate, he's 0 for 3. A lot of people don't know that you used to be Bob Carpenter, <laughs> and then you change it back to just Bob. It's all about being simple and easy. Yeah. That signed him at the age of 16 out of San Luis of the Dominican Republic. You're just killing yourself over there, aren't you? Uh -oh. This ball well struck to the other side, but Harper was playing near the line. Back to the bag, Simmons, two outs. Great scouting execution by the Nats to go with it. The next five tomorrow night here in Atlanta, Doug Fister, Matt Whistler. Max Scherzer against we're not sure yet on Thursday night. He's he, got a good fastball. He's got a nasty slider. <laughs> Split to I go with it. I that one, didn't I? 6 o'clock Friday, 11 a.m. Saturday, 8 o'clock. National TV Sunday night when the Giants come in. What a week for the Nats. Took two out of three at Philadelphia, playing well so far in Atlanta. And then home for the world champions with all the 4th of July festivities going on. Zimmerman stays on the attack and really pulls the string on Jace Peterson. We got a third time. 227 against, usually when he starts mixing in the slider and the curveball together. He's been doing a good job of that tonight. The off speed for Jordan Zimmerman has been on point in this one, the curveball especially.
One ball, two strikes. Off speed. Then a challenge fastball to end the fifth inning. So he let Peterson see some of the other secondary pitches. Then it was time to blow him away. Zimmerman only four K's tonight. What a very good five innings. The yard and the Nats are having a great time. Shelby Miller out of the ball game after striking out 10. Let's have a look at the Nats box score and you can start right at the top. Span two hits in a run. Espinosa two hits two runs. Escobar has a hit. Wilson Ramos has an RBI single and Clint Robinson has a two run homer. That's a big league debut for Jake Brigham. Called up from Gwinnett Triple A. First big league appearance. Spent most of the year in Double A, where he went six and three with a 3.05. AJ Brzezinski out to go over the sides. Well, the Braves uh, signed him as a minor league free agent a year ago, November. Changing faces in the Atlanta bullpen. Brigham is from Winter Garden, Florida. 63190. And he's 27 years of age. Up and away, two Denard Spanners had a good night. He hit the other way. A run scored, a little scratch single up the first base line, and his ninth steal of the year. Two and zero oh with 92. See his minor league numbers this year 13 games, 7 and 3 record. A lot of strikeouts versus just 14 walks. And I can tell you safely, he has a sinker. It's low, it's being one. If you're wondering about Gwinnett, by the way, their AAA, where they've been for a number of years since they left Richmond, that's just north of Atlanta. And when they build their new ballpark about 10 miles north of here, you can go from AAA to the big leagues in about 30 minutes. Span the left, Kelly Johnson, 
over toward the line for the first down. Well, it depends which way you're going for how long that trip is. Exactly. Well, if, if you're going from if you're going north, it's yeah. If you're going from trip. Atlanta to Gwinnett, that's going to be a really long trip. That would be like the Nats having their AAA in Potomac or something. It's that close. So here's Danny Espinoza, two for three tonight. Got a fastball. It's it well to left, and it's not able to be covered by Kelly Johnson. Danny Espinoza is into second with his third hit of the night. Second double. Yeah, nice swing right here. And you see how he covers that outside pitch again. We talked about the open stance and him being able to cover the outer half. If you look where he starts, good effort by Kelly Johnson. Just couldn't get there. His bat is just on the inner half of the plate off the plate. So where his hands are, there's not a long ways to go for that outside pitch. It just is so far open, it looks like he can't hit it. But he obviously can. He showed you right there. Three for four and counting for Danny Espinosa here in Atlanta. Wow. Average at 260. Escobar driving one to right. Nick Markakis under that one. Espinoza will take off for third. He'll be there for Bryce Harper. And by the way, no, this pitcher is not younger than Bryce Harper. There's only been one, right? The left hander from the Yankees whose name escapes me. Just one. Bryce's quote was I plan to play for a long time. And when I played in my 40s there's going to be a lot of pitchers younger than me. <laughs> I like that attitude. Yeah. Was that the uh, the kid Justin Wilson for the Eagles? Because that was uh, the only non veteran lefty he faced in New York. Name still escaping me, Bob. Yeah. And it, it probably will escape me for ever. Wilson's maybe been around for a while. Harper one for three with a double. Ground ball backs up to Doslovich. And the Atlanta fans can at least rejoice in something tonight. Five-nothing Nats after five and a half. He wants Jordan Zimmerman to bounce this curveball. Look at Zimmerman throws it right down the middle. Watch Zimmerman shake his head. Like, I was supposed to bounce that. So, such a perfectionist. He got the strikeout, but he knew that he left the curveball over the middle. It locked up Nick Markakis. But that's not where he wanted the pitch. It worked out nicely, as all these other strikeouts were showing you. Jordan Zimmerman's been locked in from the get go in this one, and the curveball has been the pitch tonight for him. It's been nasty. Mabin Markekis Przinski 234 for the Braves bottom six. 
Cameron may have been robbed of an extra base hit by Bryce Harper last time up on a low liner into right field. For Zimmerman 67 pitches, 53 strikes. He comes in front door with 86. Counts even 1 1. Braves box. Single hits in the last four innings. Brzezinski, second inning leadoff double. Peterson, third inning, two out single. The same for Uribe, a bloop in the fourth. And then Simmons, a one out single last inning. Four singles, four runners stranded. It's the most animated I've seen Jordan Zimmerman on the mound in a while here tonight. After his misses, you know what that's telling me? He's feeling really good. On a pitch away, gets the chopper, bare hand, bang, right to Robinson. What a play. I mean, he was squared up perfectly for that. Just matter of fact, I'm going to get off the mound quickly, bare hand this ball, and throw out a plus runner at first base. Watch this play by Jordan Zimmerman. Bare hand, all in one motion, bullet right on the money. Another strike from Jordan. This one to Clint Robinson at first. Bare hand play. Look at that. Right on the money. Extremely, extremely athletic play by Jordan Zimmerman. Wow. Not that easy. Nick Marcakis 0 for 2. And what I was about to say is that if you're feeling bad out there and you make a bad pitch, you're not going to be animated. You're just going to feel like, give me the ball back. I'm going to make the adjustment. But if you're feeling good, you know, it's like when you're golfing and you have one of those rounds, you make a bad shot. You're not supposed to make a bad shot because you're feeling good. Same way with Jordan here tonight. He's feeling good. It's coming out easy on the fastball. The curveball is breaking off the table. Got the slider when he needs it. And that's why you're seeing a little bit of animation from him tonight because he knows he's locked in. Working quickly here. Drops in the breaking ball of beauty. One and two. He's just ready, waiting for the hitters to get back in. And Marquecas will flip one to left. And a base hit. Nick Marquecas with his 87th hit of the year. AJ Pierzynski. He's pulled it twice, once over Harper's head for a double. The ground ball to Danny Espinosa last time. Who's not going into right field this time with a runner at first. But they have three on the right side of the infield. Desmond stays home on the shift. Pierzynski tried to bunt for a hit last time before grounding out. Down by five in the six. I don't think it's the worst play in the world. And if I was AJ Brzezinski, I couldn't even look out that way and see that whole left side thing. Although he did just see Jordan Zimmerman bounce off the mound and make a sweet play. So maybe that takes the thought of a base hit bunt away from Brzezinski. But they're trying to get base runners to get back in this. And a fly ball to center. <laughs> Pardon me. Twilight got it. How about second base? I'm like, why is Denard Span not coming in? That's why. Well, I was about to cover you and say the ball isn't carrying a center tonight. <laughs> I'd say Zimmerman took the bat right out of AJ's hands on that one. That was Escobar catching that ball up the middle on the shift. Juan Uribe is next with two outs. So on the spray charts that you look at in scouting reports, and it says F5. I mean, do you mark that down as a pop up that way and shade guys that way based on shifts now? Well, or do you I, see exactly where the ball went? Yeah, what I did, I just wrote five in my book and put an arrow straight up the middle, telling me that Escobar caught that ball right in the middle of the infield. I got all kind of arrows now the way the Nets played this defense with Espinosa. All 
All right, I just put an arrow too. Okay, good. See that way in October. No, no, I'll say January when you're home. Yeah. Thinking about baseball, you look back at your card. Oh yeah, he popped that ball right up the middle. Back on June 30th. I like it. This one is straight up, and I mean, where is it? Zimmerman helping out Ramos, who finds it and catches it. That ball really got up there and disappeared for a few seconds. Zimmerman rolls on with a five run lead. Early runs, Robinson the homer, and ever since then, Jordan Zimmerman's been fantastic. Yeah, four run lead. You go out there a little more relaxed, maybe than normal, coming off uh, outing against the same team, or he went eight shutout innings. He's been spectacular. Fastball command's been good. The curveball's been great, and the slider's there when he needs it. And I mean, they're just playing good baseball. It's fun to watch. Nets have stranded eight runners tonight, but they put constant pressure on the Braves. And you know, you got Doug Fister going tomorrow night. You don't want to look ahead too much. And then you got Scherzer on Thursday. This was a big one tonight, and the Nats have taken care of business so far. Like I talked about already, you've won eight games against a ball club. You come in and score four runs in the first inning. You're sending a message that, hey, we're not messing around, and this eight games in a row thing is no fluke. Sort of the top of the seventh inning. Wilson Ramos is one for three, RBI hit. Back in the first can't emphasize the importance of his hit enough. Because it was a one nothing game. He gets Shelby Miller for a two out bouncer up the middle. Robinson has a great at bat homers to make it four nothing. And that really got the Nats off. To that great start right out of the blocks. Another inning for Jake Brigham the rookie here. And Ramos will put one in the upper deck way up there on the right side. Upstairs with the breaking ball hanging up there. Two and two. And that's a nasty slider. Guy making his big league debut with a good arm and a good performance so far. Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers, they're donating $250 to the Children's National Health System for every home run a Nats player hits this season. So keep them coming, Clint Robinson. It's for a wonderful cause. 
putting your team up four to nothing is for a wonderful cause as well. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. 3 2 curveball. Helmet off. Helmet back on. And we still haven't seen the last one where he takes it off again. By the way, the next home run will get that tote board up to $20,000. The Nats have hit 79 this year, fourth most in the league. Robinson has also walked tonight. That's way inside. And low. 2 and 0. Oh. You already got a tater under your belt. Been on base a couple of times, 2 0 oh count. Let it go. Brigham originally signed with Texas. Out of Central Florida Christian Academy. He had Tommy John surgery back in 2008. With the Rangers for a couple of years after that. And now in the big leagues with the Atlanta Braves. Three balls one strike. Is that Tommy Listella's glove he's wearing who's now with the Cubs? I'm going to say no. That's probably his kids' names. I think it says Taylor. Oh, okay. I'm like, and, and Stella. Stella? But close. Yeah. By you. Like, what would he be doing with a second baseman's glove out there? Yeah. Some pitchers do use small gloves. Flint Robinson to the second baseman. But that, I mean, that would be weird if he had Tommy glove on. <laughs> kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> I mean, just because he doesn't play for him anymore. He's with the Cubs. Celebrate Independence Day weekend with the Peanuts at the Fitz, July 4th and 5th. Probably going to have fireworks, probably going to have food, probably going to have fun. And then that Wilson Ramos thing was yesterday, I think. So go to the website and straighten everything out. That's a slider in there to Ian Desmond. It was struck out three times tonight by Shelby Miller. Target away. Fastball misses out there. Jake Brigham to Ian Desmond. That's a swing, says C.B. Buckner. Down at first base, and the inning is over. Hyundai sponsors the seventh inning stretch from Atlanta tonight in the capital city. It's all Nats right now. 5 nothing. Test drive the award-winning Elantra this 4th of July at your local Hyundai dealer. That'll be a great thing for your holiday weekend to go with some. Nats baseball.
fans, this is your last chance to vote for Bryce, Yunel, Denard, or whoever you want, as long as it's a national for the 2015 All-Star Game. In case you haven't heard, it's in Cincinnati in July, coming up here in a couple of weeks. Go to nationals.com slash vote now. Voting ends Thursday, July 2nd at 11.59 p.m. Vote for the Nats up to 35 times. So it's not really your last chance. You have until Thursday, July 2nd. But go vote. Vote for Denard. He would love to go to Cincinnati. It's beautiful this time of year. Really Outside is. edge, bottom of the seventh underway, Kelly Johnson. Braves fans out of the stretch trying to get that tomahawk chop thing going. Zimmerman has retired Johnson on a pop up to short and a foul ball down the line caught by Michael Taylor. Brings that breaking ball around, it just didn't get around enough. Seems like he can throw that thing for a strike, the curveball, anytime he wants tonight. Had great command of it. He threw it for a ball, too, when he wants. Like that. Well, that's nasty. And that's the key. You throw it for a strike early, then you throw it for a ball late. I talk about it all the time as a hitter. I can't wait around. Mercedes Benz going to show you the curveball for a ball after the curveball for a strike. Look at pitch number four and then pitch number five low and out of the zone. And Kelly Johnson can't wait around to see if that's going to be a strike or a ball. He has to commit. And that's really been the story for Jordan here tonight. Fastball command great, too. It's been coming out nice and easy, 94 95. The curveball's been great. Joey Terdoslovich now. Two fly balls to Michael A. Taylor. And now one to Denard Span. Nothing sweeter than a one pitch out at this stage of a ball game. Jordan came into this inning with 82 pitches. And he's one out away. From going at least seven for the eighth time this year. Andrelton Simmons, the hitter in the number eight spot. I'll tell you what, the Braves miss Freddie Freeman. Oh. And I know that's captain obvious, but when you look at what their first baseman have done in the 10 games without Freddie Freeman, they have zero RBI. Wow. So they haven't driven in a run. Whoever's played first, there's been a number of guys, Kelly Johnson, Trudoslovich. And his success against our ball club, well documented. He's just one of the better players in the National League, and it just doesn't have the same feel because you're always thinking, when's he coming up? How many guys might be on base? Right. Desmond, nice scoop. Low throw. Good pick, Clint Robinson. Well done on both ends of that 6 3. And Jordan Zimmerman roars into the eighth inning, leading 5 0 with some help. Point systems 
They offer the technology you need when you need it. And by Ocean City, Maryland, put your vacation days to good use. In Ocean City, Maryland, book now at OCOcean.com. The great Warren Spahn, Buffalo, New York native. There's an award named after him that Gio Gonzalez won three years ago for the best left-handed pitcher in baseball. And the answer to a wonderful trivia question, by the way, was Michael A. Taylor. What is it? Warren Spahn, who had 363 career wins and 363 career hits. I know that one. <laughs> who is Warren Spahn? <laughs> this is not Jeopardy. You oh. don't have to ask it in the form of a question. I just knew that. But a good call on your part. Thanks. What a pitcher. Big late kick for the Milwaukee. That's Span. Boston, then the Milwaukee Brewers. Not Spawn. Exactly. Span. Span. Just clearing it up. Yeah, from Spawn to Span. I like it. Taylor, Jordan Zimmerman, and that guy here in the eighth. Jordan Zimmerman 0 for 2 with the sacrifice pitching brilliantly. 91 pitches 70 strikes in seven innings. Starting to get just a tad spoiled watching the starting rotation aren't we. Just a little bit. I don't know I kind of like being a spoiled baseball brat for weeks at a time. What was he thinking throwing four balls. In the first three innings. <laughs> Clean it up. I mean, this run they're on right now, the historic scoreless inning streak, what Max Scherzer's been doing, Steven Strasburg, his last two starts, Jordan Zimmerman, his last start against the Braves in this one, Doug Fister back healthy, Gio Gonzalez has looked great. Taylor not getting to that one upstairs, 91. That's three strikeouts and two and a third for the rookie making his debut. Jake Brigham. Joe Ross gave up a run and got shipped to the minor leagues. Boy, that's brutal. <laughs> I mean, come on. Is that, what what we're we seeing do? here is epic. It's what everybody thought was going to happen in the offseason. The best staff ever assembled. Well, it's happening. It really is. Well, and to me, and all, all of these guys are good in their own right. Jordan, Steven, Geo, Doug. But I, I don't think you can minimize the Scherzer effect on this entire staff. No, I, I, because he's shown them and he has shown us something that's at a level that we've never seen before. And I'm talking every time out FP, you know, not once or twice in three or four starts, but I mean every time out. Yeah, and then like I said, how can you if you're on the staff, go five innings and come out and look Scherzer in the eye. Yeah, I mean, you know. it's one of those things where it has the snowball effect and you're trying to feed off of what he's doing. You're watching him lead by example. And what he's done is so special. Now, if I'm taking the ball after him, maybe I'm not going to be perfect through five innings every time, but I'm going to give you a good effort. That was a breaking ball upstairs. Brigham's had a couple of those get away, but Jordan getting out of town here. Pretty good pitch. Look out. A backup slider. One ball, two strikes. Then he goes fastball, and Jordan. Makes contact over to Peterson. Two down here in the eighth. Denard Span will take his time getting into the box. Give this pitcher a breather here. Denard two for four tonight another multi hit game. He's it safely 11 of his last 13 and 16 of 21. And we told you earlier now the on base streak is at 20 games. the division tonight. They're in the late innings. 
Mets being shut down by the Cubs at home one nothing. Phillies trailing at home against Milwaukee two one Marlins had a four one lead. It's now four three over the Giants in the seventh down in Miami. Outside two and one. Breaking pitch stays upstairs, ball three. I don't think the Nard Spam loved AJ Przinsky holding that ball there as long as he did. He gave him a little peek as he got back into the box, like that ball was up. Looked like ball four, Denard hacking, three and two. Talked about the Streak the Braves are on six of their last eight at home. They haven't given up double digit hits in their last seven home games. The Nats could get that done with one more knock here tonight. Span out of play down the left field way. All right, now give it to the kid. Come on. Are you obligated as an adult if you catch a foul ball to give it to a kid? It's become the thing to do over the last five years. It has. Ah, he got it. He did. That away, buddy. I don't know if I want your charity, though, if I'm a kid. I want to catch it myself. Nice and bad by Denard Span. He's on for the third time tonight. Danny Espinosa, big night. It all started the first inning off Shelby Miller. Little double in the gap after Denard Span's single. So Miller had only given up three first inning hits all season long. He gave up four in the first here tonight. Danny Espinosa's single, little blooper his second time up. Here's another double by Espinosa. Kelly Johnson can't come up with it. So a three for four working. Danny Espinosa going for a four hit night right here, right now. Do you remember the time the adult gave you the foul ball at the game when you're older or do you remember the time you actually scrambled for it and caught it. Yes. Good answer. Probably both D all the above. I mean talk about peer pressure though. If you don't nowadays. I think yeah. they arrest you. They cuff you and take you out. Maybe Mace involved. I'm not sure. That's a little harsh, but I think yeah. you should be escorted out of the ball. Trying to make my point. <laughs> and home run balls are going for 20 bucks a pop, apparently. Uh, I mean that. Yeah, that sale was way too easy. He, he should have held out. I think that's about right. Jose Lobaton going upper tank in Philadelphia. Home run ball went not on eBay, but an in game transaction for 20 bucks. To a Nats fan. Well done. <laughs> Two balls and one strike to Danny Espinosa. And Jose, I mean, he went upper deck in Philadelphia. Hit that ball a ton. Trying to extend this inning a little bit. Span's already done it with a walk. Espinosa doubled against Jake Brigham, the second batter he faced, and that was two innings ago. The rookie making his big league debut had retired seven straight until that span base on balls. So Danny's raised his average tonight from 251 up to 260. Left handed side of the plate. He's up around 240 now. Jodoslovich holding span. He's already swiped one tonight, but he has a short lead.
There you go. Now, does he have to give it to a kid? I think that kid belongs to him. Did he give it to him? Of course he did. Yes. In the See, there's, there's, there's magic in every foul ball. Like there really is. This is such a feel-good evening. I just think the foul ball is the greatest thing ever and stands in a big league game. Really Three is. and two now. And Denard Spann will be off to the races on the next pitch from the rookie Brigham. Trying to complete three innings of scoreless relief in his big league debut. Right in there. Danny Espinosa expecting something a little harder. So the rookie does a great job in his first three big league innings. Five nothing Nets. Nats fans, never miss a game update, behind the scenes moment, or exclusives contest. Follow at Mass and Nationals on Twitter for all the latest buzz. Again, that's at Mass and Nationals on Twitter. I follow them. You should too. I just made that up. That's not good. Yeah, that wasn't on the read. I just embellished there. Your ad lib skills are improving by inches every year. <laughs> So approaching his average of 94 pitches a game, Jordan Zimmerman, 91 pitches, 70 strikes through seven. Pedro Siriaco, who has 0 for 1 career against him, hits for Jake Brigham. Then the top of the order, Peterson and Mabin. 91 right in there, bottom of the eighth underway. Zimmerman trying to go at least eight for the third time this year, and he did it to the Braves last week. Yeah, you know he's done with that first pitch curveball tonight. He's kept the Braves off the ambush on the first pitch fastball. Siriaco coming off the bench would have been all over that fastball, but he sat there and watched the curveball for a strike early. So now, as a Braves hitter, you're not sure you're getting that heater from Jordan first pitch. And he's kept them off balance all night. Now he swings at a curveball in the dirt. He's just been brilliant. And the 0-2 right by you with 92 strikeout number six. Nissan will show you a three pitch see ya. A little cut to that fastball at 92. He started on the inner half, ran it back down the middle. Jordan Zimmerman has been spectacular his last two starts against the Braves. Eight innings, six hits, no runs last week. Struck out three, didn't walk anybody, got a lot of contact outs. Did that on an even 100 pitches. Jace Peterson, top of the order. Fastball, here it is, guys.
one one pitch. I mean when a guy's putting a big curveball anywhere he wants. Great command. He just slowed down his delivery. He's really staying over the mound longer than he was earlier in the season and. This looks more compact and under control. Yeah, get him. Got to be a hit batter. It was not a 3 2 pitch. And the Braves have their first base runner since the sixth inning. Yeah, a little cut to the fastball all of a sudden. That might tell you that Jordan's getting a little bit fatigued, overthrowing, kind of yanking that pitch. You saw strike three to Syriaco with a little cut to it. Matt Williams talking to Steve McCaddy, and I get somebody up in the bullpen. Cameron may been with one out. Zimmerman bounced off the mound to make a good play on him last time with a bare hander. Breaking pitch right in there. Right off the end of the stick. I well, always say in a George Zimmerman start, curveball, slider both work and look out, and that's been the case tonight. More curveball than slider. Last time I threw the slider 18%, the curveball 22%. I don't know what the exact number is tonight, but I guarantee you far more curveballs than sliders. Left hander Matt Thornton getting ready. And the 0 2 with one out, and that's a Breaking ball coming in front door that may have been while he was swinging with it, the pitch wasn't that far from him. Fastball in, slider, or curveball away. Let's see. But, but look at the pitch track. I mean, that's what he's been doing tonight in, out, up, down, wherever he wants. Front door, and that is foul. Mm. Inside out swing by Cameron Mabin. Jordan in his career has thrown eight complete games for those shutouts. Working here in the eighth inning, trying to put an end to this in a five-nothing game. Maven hits it pretty well to center. Span going back, stops right there to grab it. Two outs. He getting tired. Elevated fastball right there. He kind of spun the curveball in there the pitch before and. Smelling the finish line, trying to get the third out here in the bottom of the eighth. I think this could be his last hitter. Let's see. It looks like there was a little urgency with Steve McCaddy there on the phone. Yeah, if Markakis would get on, Pierzynski. And Max Scherzer, he answers the phone. <laughs> He throws no hitters. I it, love it. He's into it, man. He's a team guy all the way. He is. Might be the best part about it. <laughs> Ahead of another hitter. Markake is able to drop a single down the left field line last time up. One for three tonight. Left handed hitting Perzinski next and left hander ready in the bullpen. And you see the command just starting to waver a little bit. Pitch number 108 coming from Jordan trying to get that last out. Jordan's high pitch total for the year 113 in seven innings at the Cubs. 
May 26 the only game the Nats lost in that series 3 2. Struck Markakis out with that curveball we showed you in the first team. See what he goes to right here. One, two. Markakis, good job of making contact this year. A lot of hits. Fastball up, and he was a little late for it. Might have been the first changeup he's thrown all night. 85 miles an hour. So that might give you an idea of what he's thinking out there, trying to get that last out. Arcakis does it again going the other way. Boy, that guy's such a good hitter. No power really to speak of this year. But he just keeps collecting hits, and that's 88. And here comes Matt Williams. His mind's made up. He'll go lefty, lefty. It's a good move. Well, managers always say, FP, good to get a guy out one hitter too early than one hitter too late. Well, he's pitched a whale of a game tonight. You see Cliff Robinson, Clint Robinson, excuse me, pat on the back, Danny Espinosa, everybody knowing the effort that Jordan Zimmerman gave here against the Braves tonight. Nicely done. This call to the bullpen package by the UPS store, your one stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. Zimmerman walks off, good effort. Dugout can't wait. Against the Atlanta Braves going. And we'll see if Matt Thornton now can nail down that final out of this eighth inning. We see the Arsenal fastball 94, slider 84, change up 11% of the time, 87 miles an hour. 29th appearance for Thornton, 14 strikeouts, 5 walks, and opponents hit 216. AJ Pruszynski and Matt Thornton. Have met before AJ's one for five career against him. Fastball up at 91. Pretty good number right there. Nice breaking ball. One side of the plate to the other. Single in those five trips. And reaching for that one, Danny Espinosa waiting for it. And the Nats with Zimmerman. And one from Matt Thornton getting through eight ahead five nothing.
starts against the Braves. And he has made his return to the rotation. Matt Whistler, the 22 year old rookie, he's pitched 12 big league innings. The Nats got in last week. As part of that sweep at home, Desmond goes over the scoreboard. And that's game two of this three game series tomorrow night. That's extra. 6 30 with Johnny and Ray. We'll join you from the booth at 7. First pitch, 7 10 from the rookie. And uh, here's another one Ryan Kelly. Another guy who's pitched at Double A Mississippi and the Triple A Gwinnett this year. Born in Memphis out of Walter State Community College in Tennessee. Originally with the Pirates. Braves have some injuries to their bullpen guys. And, uh, right now, getting some rookies some action pitching from behind on this evening. Escobar Harper Ramos, top of the ninth. Full moon over Atlanta tonight on the 30th of June. Got a little ring around it tonight, too. Beautiful. Escobar one for four with a bunt base hit back in the third. So two major league debuts in a row now Jake Brigham and Ryan Kelly. Eighty nine top of the zone inner edge. By the way, the Mets were shut out by the Cubs, one nothing tonight. Washington with a chance for a three and a half game lead in the East over them, and seven over Atlanta. Goes with the fastball and it's right up the middle. Going to challenge a big league hitter, fourth in the league, with an 0-2 heater. And Escobar has a two for five night. That's a super salvage for you know Escobar, one for four into a two for five. Average at 323. And I'm sticking to the most underrated player in the National League until he starts getting some serious press for what he's done in the first half of this season. He has been maybe the most consistent guy at bat to at bat all season long for the Nationals. Bryce has been the most successful hitter with his numbers and yeah. the power display he's put on. But you know, Escobar, the most consistent hitter from day one. Agreed. Professional hitter. Harper rims one to right center. That'll make him two for five tonight. That's a deep single out there, and Escobar scoots on over to third, no problem. Wait, can I change what I just said? No. All right. But he's pretty good. <laughs> now Bryce Harper turns a one for four into a two for five. He got a hanger from Kelly. And this is basically the same area both of his hits have gone tonight, right center field. Good swing by Harper. You know Escobar with an easy read going first to third, and the Nats trying to add on to their five-run lead here in the ninth. They like to hit in this ballpark. Seems like they're always putting up crooked numbers in this place. And there's nothing at all wrong about a big ballpark for hitters. Room for lots of doubles and triples in this yard. Quick infield, ball gets through it quick. It's interesting that every time I look out there, though, I think about RFK because the dimensions and the deep gaps are similar to what the Nats had their first three years. 380 out there in left center, 390 right center. That was a big yard over on East Capitol Street. And Wilson Ramos guys one on a play right side. Now, if you're a kid and you grab one, do you have to give it to another kid or can you keep it? I think he's good. I did they card you? Okay, you're over 18, you have to give it to somebody younger. I'm confused. Well, I think you're I think it's a little paralysis by analysis. Imagine that. I never do that. <laughs> no balls, two strikes. Ramos has a one for four. 
He'll chop it left side. A run's coming home. And they will turn a 5 4 3. And that's really okay because it's now 6 0. Well, it's okay for the ball club. Wilson Ramos doesn't get an RBI for that because it's a double play. You know, Escobar, good AB. Bryce Harper, good AB. And David Carpenter getting loose for the ninth. Yeah, it'd be kind of interesting to have him come out in his old stomping grounds and nail down a ball game for the hated rivals. Those nasty Nats from D.C. Well, Matt Thornton did his job. He got Przinsky three pitches, two strikes. And another productive night for Clint Robinson with the first inning two run homer. Based on balls in the fifth, he's one for three. He's now driven in 10 runs in his last 19 games. Nats have done something that no opponent's done against the Braves in a couple of weeks on this diamond. That's double digit hits. 11 for the Nationals tonight. He's happy, I promise. Pitch up. Top of the ninth over, but the Nationals pick up a run. 6 nothing on 11 hits. Three outs to get. Scenario as David Carpenter gets the call for the Nats to close this out. He was a mainstay of the Atlanta bullpen with Jordan Walden in front of Craig Kimbrell here for a couple of years. And with more on Carp, here's Dan. Carp, I talked to Carp earlier today about returning to Atlanta, David Carpenter, that is, and he said it was weird to walk past the home clubhouse today and not hang a right and pop into the Atlanta side of things. He, he said it's weird to be back in this ballpark back in Atlanta, but then he also noted just how different this Atlanta ball club is than it was even last year. There's been so much roster turnover that he only knows a handful of guys over there now, and pretty much the entire bullpen is now gone. You mentioned a couple of the mainstays at the back end that had been there with him no longer here in Kimbrel and all those others. So David Carpenter excited to pitch against his former club, but it really doesn't look much like the club that he knew his last two years here in Atlanta. He's awfully happy with this ball club. Playing not that far from home, Morgantown, West Virginia native. Had three saves for the Braves in 2014. So he has stood on this mound in Atlanta.
for the last out of a game before. And this time it's the bottom of the ninth, and that's a fastball that misses low. First batter, Juan Uribe, 0 for 2 career against the Nats right hander. Ball two. High heater popped up out of play. The rebate tonight, one for three with a bloop single to center back in the fourth. I think it's weird facing your old team if you've only been with one team. A rebate checks one to left. Taylor watches and that ball gets out of here. Home run. Juan Arepe with a laser to left. That's his fifth of the year. Four of those now with Atlanta. He's a guy that definitely can still hit a fastball and a hit in the count. Knew what was coming and let loose. Low tracer, 96 mile an hour heater, almost hurt somebody in left field. Fifth home run of the year, as you said, for Juan Uribe. Carpenter throws the strike to Kelly Johnson as they face each other for the first time. For the Braves, their 45th homer of the year. The fewest in all of baseball. Good slider, 89 down and in. One Nats. The teams have traded runs here in the ninth. Going back to the slider. Good pitch, fouled off. Nationals trying to improve their road record to 21 and 20. Trying to go 10 over 500 in the division. 23 and 13. Trying to make it 9 out of 10. Both overall and against the Braves. All fouled straight back. One and two at stakes. Try to run that fastball back right here. Wow. Carpenter thought he had the strikeout. He was walking off the mound. Gabe Morales didn't call it at the knees. Yeah, perfectly executed. He wanted that two seamer to come back just a little bit. You see Carpenter with a little stroll on the mound. He thought it was strike three, and now he's going to have to reset. Kelly Johnson giving him a fight. Yep. That's loose, so the Nats could be three and a half up. Could be seven up on the Braves. Marlins are leading 5 3 against the Giants in the ninth. Braves need two base runners to get the tying run to the on deck circle. And Carpenter with a challenge up in the zone there. 87 took a little bit off, and Kelly Johnson went ahead of him. That bat that Kelly Johnson is using looks like it's seen a few games. That's not just one he picked up tonight. I mean, I think 
Looks like it's battle tested. 0 for 3 tonight. Ground ball, base hit. Had a lot of overspin. Gets into right field. And if they get one more base runner, it'll be time for Drew Storm to rev things up. That was a good at bat by Kelly Johnson. Fouled off some tough pitches from David Carpenter, extended the at bat, and ended it with a hit. Next up is Joey Jardoslavich. So you got to think to yourself, okay, five run lead, make one good pitch, you get two outs. Just keep the ball in the bottom half of the strike zone. See the target? Trudasovic goes up, Hacking. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Three balls in the air against Jordan Zimmerman. And 4 for 20 in 11 games since his recall. It's a good breaking ball up in the strike zone. One and two. Might have been a good breaking ball to hit. Probably not where Carpenter wanted that slider above the belt. Center Denard Span tracking it. Has it for the important first out. Good communication, good hand signals by Span so that Michael Taylor could peel off. And a big first out here in the bottom of the ninth. Andrewton Simmons, the number eight hitter. Number nine spot after this. Simmons facing Carpenter for the first time. And in that number nine spot, Chris Johnson steps out on deck. Eighty eight on the slider, one one. Jordan Zimmerman threw 109 pitches tonight, just 24 balls, 85 strikes. That's a strike percentage of 78%. <laughs> That's the highest strike percentage that Jordan's ever had in a start of seven innings or more. His previous eye was 76%. So talk about filling up the strike zone all night long. My goodness. Carpenter misses down and in with 96, 2 and 1. That still lead by five here. And a foul tip will even things up. It seems that that one that high, maybe you try one a little bit higher. Got a pitch to play with right here. Well, Drew Storen not throwing yet, getting loose. 2 2 with one out. Hit straight back. Marlins have held on to beat the Giants 5 3.
I think Matt Williams deciding whether he wants to get Drew Storn or something, somebody else, something, somebody else lose. Two two. Oh, that was nasty coming up and in. I think if I read Matt Williams' lips right, he said something about what's our best option. Swing and a miss on 95 upstairs. Two outs. That's what you got to do. If you can swing an elevated fastball letter high, try to elevate one over the letters. Nice pitch by David Carpenter. Good execution right here. And Simmons climbs the ladder with him. Tough to catch up to 95 above the letters. Looks good as a hitter. Very rarely do you get on top of it. Chris Johnson, he'll appear against Carpenter for the first time. Fastball rides inside. Casey Jansen for now getting loose. And a 1 0. Popped up right side. Clint Robinson over near the tarp. And the Nats have taken care of game one against the Braves. Nine in a row against the Atlanta Braves lost the first game of the season to him and reeled off eight straight win this one six to one Danny Espinosa all over the place but the story of tonight the first inning and four runs and Jordan Zimmerman pounding the strike zone with all of his pitches good W to start this series up. Yeah one of Jordan Zimmerman's best outings in recent memory getting it done against the Braves Robinson an early homer the Nats got four in the first and never. Looked back 6 1 Nats. Tomorrow night, Doug Fister goes. Nats extra 6 30. This has been a presentation of Mass and Johnny and Ray. Straight ahead and from Atlanta. See you later.